This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Believing in girls. That's not just a slogan. It's a mission for one organization, and they are transforming the lives of thousands of young women. The Case for Pace, the Pace Center for Girls, coming up on this latest edition of In Studio. Girls are at a higher risk than boys for sexual abuse, assault, and domestic violence. This elevated risk may explain the strong link between trauma and abuse and girls' delinquency. Last year, in Florida alone, some 12,000 girls were referred to the state's juvenile justice system. That represents almost 30 percent of the total juvenile population. These unacceptable numbers have spurred a statewide girls' center into action, and they are making a huge difference in so many young women's lives. To talk about the Pace Center for Girls, we've assembled a great group of guests this evening. We welcome Lori Rogers. Lori began her career at Pace as a teacher and is now a regional executive director with the agency. Lori has enjoyed over 22 years of helping girls from Escambia and Santa Rosa counties change their lives. Lori considers herself a local. She graduated from Pensacola Catholic High School, Pensacola State College, the University of West Florida, and Troy State. Cindy Warren. Cindy is the managing member of the Pensacola Office of Warren Averett CPAs and Consultants. She also serves as the current board chair for Pace Center for Girls Escambia Santa Rosa. Cindy is also on the board of directors and is past president for Impact 100 Pensacola Bay Area. And as you may know, this is the largest impact group in the world. And Christina Hawkins. Christina is a lighting consultant at Gulf Power and a board member of Pace Center for Girls. Serving for almost two years now, Christina is currently a member of the executive committee and has been a chair of the successful Bagot fundraiser for Pace since joining the board. That's so fun. She's involved with numerous community boards, including Impact 100, the March of Dimes, the Gulf Coast chapters of Jack and Jill of America and the American Association of Blacks in Energy. She's also very active with her church, Zion Hope. And uh, later in this evening's broadcast, we'll hear from Sheriff David Morgan, and we'll also be treated to a visit with some of the lovely young women who have been a part of the Pace Center for Girls. So there you go. Welcome, ladies. We're glad that you are all here. Very excited about this show and telling our community more about the Pace Center. So thank you all for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, Lori, let's start things off and, and talk about the history of PACE. I think it be began in Jacksonville. I really enjoy telling the story of the beginning of PACE because it speaks to the idea that one person can really make a difference. I think a lot of us think, well, I'm just, this is just me and what can I do? But um, it was a 27-year-old social worker, and she was working in the locked facility in Jacksonville, Florida, with girls. And she recognized that things weren't changing for them. They were still in that environment, and they could not see themselves as being able to transform into what they always wanted to be as, as young girls and fulfill their dreams. So she petitioned the court system to release them. She bought a station wagon. She picked them up at their homes every day, took them to a church basement where she counseled and taught them and took them back to their homes. Wow. That was in 1984. And how did it go from there? That was in Jacksonville. There are, what, 19 PACE centers now in Florida? Um, we began being funded by the Department of Juvenile Justice. And uh, because they became aware, um, different communities asked to have PACE centers brought to their community. That's how we also opened our center here in Escambia County. That's incredible. And you ladies um, serve on the board because you believe in girls. You've seen the transforming power, hearing Lori's story, um, and, and we're going to talk to the sheriff later about, um, you know, 
you can't learn something if you're not taught it and if you're not in that environment, right? Is that kind of the basis of things? That is that is true, Sherry. And you know, the thing about the Pace Center is sometimes the girls come there um, because of the environments that they have been in. They, they feel like they don't have any self-value. They have very little confidence. Um, and so to see the transformation happen in the, in the lives of those young women um, when they've been at pace and to understand that they really do have value and they really are um, worth something and that they can be all that they were really created to be is um, it's easy to talk about pace and the success. And, and when you talk about the outcomes of the program, it's, it's really uh, amazing. Well, and the girls now are taking more of a stance of uh, pride for being a PACE girl, whereas before, maybe you might have gone, oh, I might have had some trouble, so I, I went there. But now it's a whole other story. It's like great to be from PACE, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. To me, it's an elite group. I mean, you've got a second opportunity. You have, you're just a part of a huge success story. So if you're a part of it, you're actually a good example so I think definitely it is something you want to be a part of. And what drew you as board members to pay? So I'll, I'll go ahead and continue with you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, thankfully, I attended Bagot. Um, <laughs> I had, hadn't been here long in Pensacola, moving from Mississippi for work, mm -hmm. and I went to Bagot. Um, I had actually been a part of a, another fundraiser purse auction mm -hmm. that was very similar to Baggett, so mm -hmm. I was excited to go shopping, mm -hmm. and I'd heard a little bit about Pace Center for Girls, so I went to the, to the event, and I started hearing more about the organization, and I actually got an opportunity um, from Bentina Terry, which is VP of Gulf Power, mm -hmm. previous VP of Gulf mm -hmm. Power. She's gone on to bigger and better things mm -hmm. now. Um, she mentioned that they had a board opening, and so I got an opportunity to connect with um, Brenda Babowski, I always say her mm -hmm. name wrong, um, and did a tour, met Lori, mm -hmm. met some of the girls, and I'm like, oh my God, I hope I can be a part. Mm -hmm. So went through the process, and thankfully, I was selected, and I knew immediately I wanted to mm -hmm. be a part of Baggett again, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that more. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> because that's so, everybody's favorite yeah. is Baggett. Um, after the girls, it's Baggett, right? Yeah. So, Cindy, what drew you um, at, to become a board member? Um, well, I've been on this board for probably 20 years. Wow. And um, so I've seen a lot of change. Mm -hmm. And the opportunity to be a part of, of the change and, and the way that PACE is affecting the lives of these girls was really what interested me. And I've got to tell you that, um, Laurie knows this, but over the years I've said, I, I think it might be time for me to let someone else <laughs> take this slot and she says, no, no, no. But then every month in our board meetings, we have a girl come in and tell her story. And um, that erases all doubt that I might <laughs> really have exhausted my time here. Um, so just, just to be a part of that transformation. And you know, when I first came on the board, we, we were on the campus of PSC, but we were in a very small space and the girls were so passionate and that the staff was so passionate um, and now we've grown and we're in a, in a better place, locale, uh, mm -hmm. locality. So it's been a lot of great mm -hmm. changes over the years. It sounds like, Lori, let's back up a little bit and talk about who PACE serves. I mean, I think we kind of know who PACE serves, but um, let's talk about who, who you serve and what the program structure is sure. of PACE. Um, we serve girls between the ages of 11 and 18 who are experiencing, have, and currently may be experiencing significant issues in their personal and family and school life. Um, because we're funded by the Department of Juvenile Justice, the girls do have to meet certain criteria to be accepted into the program. That would be they maybe are having trouble in school or having a, a certain, um, you know, numbers on certain things. In most cases, as uh, these ladies spoke mm -hmm. to earlier, there's a lot of family instability. Mm -hmm. um, we track the data mm -hmm. on what's going on in the girls' lives from the first time they walk in the door. So um, presently, about 61% of the girls that we're serving have 
a parent or a sibling that's involved in uh, pro on probation mm -hmm. or in prison. Mm -hmm. They have 30 to 40 percent have mental health problems. They have 50 percent or more frequent moves. There's a lot of instability in their in their home lives. That causes them often to get behind in school, either through not attending or just feeling hopeless and they don't try. So when the girls first enroll, about 70 percent of them are two or more years behind where they need to be. So you can help get them where they need to be. And you've got some unique program structures. You've got a day program, a GED program. And, we do. And, and what else? Um, the, our REACH program. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us about those? Sure. So um, in the day program, we have a, a full teaching staff and a full counseling staff. Because what we do is provide the girls a holistic program. We don't just treat them as students. They are girls. Um, we do a significant amount of assessing when they first come in, and I kind of think of it like a puzzle. We put the pieces out on the table, and then we see where there could be missing pieces, and then we work as a team to help them fill those things in. So no one gets the same service. Everyone gets what they specifically need. The program itself, they are all getting education, they're all getting counseling, they're all getting community service opportunities, they're all getting our signature life skills course called Spirited Girls, but they may, they may receive it in different methods and at different times, depending on the girl. Highly individualized. What a blessing for not only the people who serve, but for the girls. Let's talk a little bit about maybe one or two of your favorite um, success stories. What do, you, what do you think? Do you have one that stands out in your mind, or are they just all great? They're definitely all great. Um, like Cindy mentioned, at our, board, at our board meetings every month, a young lady will come and they'll tell their story it's just always, it just reminds you why you're a part of the board and why you're so proud to, to give back. Um, oftentimes it's whether they've been abused or um, a parent in prison and they get an opportunity to go to PACE and to actually have a second chance to do more and they, they took it. Mm -hmm. And then they tell us about how they're making straight A's or just doing mm -hmm. well in, in life. And then it's like, oh my God. It's, it's all worth yeah. it. We've got about a minute before the break, but it sounds like it, this program could actually just be good for all people, really. Yeah. yeah. What mm -hmm. would you really say? It really could because yeah. it, it's so encouraging and so empowering. And I think that's really the benefit to those young girls to empower them to find, you know, really what's within and help them understand and know with a great deal of confidence that they can be all of that. Wow, and all humans could use that, yeah. I think, really. The what's within, right? Yes. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break, and uh, when we return, we'll tell you more about the PACE Center for Girls. You're watching in studio on WSRE. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back. You're watching In Studio. Our topic, the PACE Center for Girls. Our guests, Exec Executive Director Lori Rogers and Board Members Christina Hawkins and Cindy Warren. I want to thank you all once again for being here. And I'm going to back up a little bit. Tell me what PACE stands for. PACE stands for Practical, Academic, Cultural, education. Okay, and I hear there's some hugs thrown in there every now and then too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that probably fits in with the with the cultural. Mm -hmm. And you had some humble Absolutely. beginnings. 
When I first started, um, so over 22 years ago, we were in a facility behind University Mall. It's about 1,200 square feet. And we had about 25 girls, and I was one of four teachers. I could never even imagine, I think, at that time, where we would find ourselves today. And I have to give so much of the credit to the members of our community who have embraced our girls and supported us all along the journey of being able to expand the program to serve up to 60 girls in the day program, open a GED program, which I'd like to share information mm -hmm. about, and also our REACH program. Our board of directors are not just members of a board. They are our partners in the process of helping these girls change their lives. They work tirelessly. They don't just show up at meetings. They're having committee meetings. They're, they're working. They're s spreading the good news about the positive changes that happen in the girls' lives. And that is the reason why we are in our 13,500-square-foot building right over here. Mm -hmm. And about a year ago, I was working with a girl who had been in foster care most mm -hmm. of her life. And through that, she had two credits. She was 17 years old. Mm -hmm. And she was had given up. And um, I said, you know what? I think you need to get a GED. But the other part of me said, you can't leave here. You need to be with us so we can support you and love you and still work on the ways in which you need to improve your, your coping skills and your sense of self. And so because we have support, mm -hmm. um, I, we had the funds. I found a way mm -hmm. to hire somebody to be our GED teacher. Wow. And this year, we graduated 28 girls is the highest amount we've ever had. And 17 of those girls finished with us in our GED program. And 13 girls of that class are enrolled at PSC right now. Nice. And so that is that the REACH program? If you could tell now, us that really quickly. The REACH program, mm -hmm. because our agency recognized that we had the tremendous amount of community support that we had, we were the third center to be chosen to receive Department of Juvenile Justice funds to open the REACH program. Now, what the REACH program does is provides PACE services to girls, but they can stay enrolled in their public school. Okay. So our yeah. therapists go to them mm -hmm. in their homes, in the community. They'll take them to a park. They'll meet at McDonald's. It doesn't matter as long as they are spending quality time helping them work on their goals, providing them therapy, and, and that, that extra gender responsive mm -hmm. nurturing approach that we use with the That's girls. That's great. And so there are centers all over the state, and I understand that PACE is pushing itself even more, and tell us about that if you would, Cindy. Well, the model works so well, and as we talked about before, the outcomes are so positive. Um, the agency is actually moving into Georgia. And um, we've talked about that for a number of years and moving into different states. And um, I think that other, other areas see the effects and they see the positive outcomes and, and they want a part of that. So actually, it's not another state doing this. It is our PACE agency moving into other states. That's amazing. And you're always needing to make a great program like this work, additional funds. So you're getting support from the community, the sheriff's department, from all kinds of places, but also from big fundraisers. And you're co-chairing that. Would you tell us about Bag It? Because that is so fun. Absolutely. <laughs> a past board member, Diane, John, she actually, 10 years ago, we're celebrating our 10-year anniversary this year, she actually was on a plane reading USA Today a story about um, this bag fundraiser at a luncheon in L.A. And she brought the idea back to the board, and hey, now it's history. <laughs> Every year, over 150 women come out to this luncheon. Mm -hmm. They come and they participate by... Um, being a part of our silent auction. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have so many people in the community that donate designer bags, high-end bags, I mean, beautiful bags. Mm -hmm. And they come, 
the ladies come to the mm -hmm. come to the to the auction mm -hmm. so that they could get this beautiful bag. Right. You know? right. So we have fellowship. We have a great lunch um, at a beautiful location every year. So. And we were looking at a picture of a very diamond studded bag. Mm -hmm. um, that looks like uh, somebody will be happy to receive that and the funds will go to Pace. Absolutely. We have mm -hmm. a opportunity bag for opportunity ticket mm -hmm. to win this bag, that jeweler trade shop. Mm -hmm. They are so generous in their donations each year. So this year, we have a special bag. It is beautiful, a white crystal Judith, Judith Lieber bag. We just saw that picture. Yes, yeah. and inside is gonna be a diamond, a th three quarter wow. carat diamond mm -hmm. to be placed in a pendant or a ring of the winner's choice. Mm -hmm. It's only $50, mm -hmm. you don't have to be there. Oh wow, so the community can really Absolutely. support you on this. Yes, we have yeah. a link um, on Eventbrite, okay. Okay. so you can purchase tickets okay. for the Opportunity Bag mm -hmm. as well as the luncheon. And attend um, mm -hmm. and support. Or either or. Yeah, and thank you for your service on that. We were talking about bringing the community more into what you're doing. What kinds of things, you do something in March? We have always done, well I'd say for mm -hmm. probably 10 years mm -hmm. or so, um, a let's go out in the community and thank. And we were on television, we were on the radio, and we'd walk up and down the streets. Mm -hmm. um, but several years ago, we turned March into Believing in Girls Month. It's, it's Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. And we asked the mayor, and he has been gracious, to actually proclaim March as Believing in Girls Month. And that is just one of the activities that we do. We, we do call it now Positive Picket, and we take our vans and our girls and our staff, and we go out with signs that say thank you. We walk up and down the street, and we visit some of the folks that are in the downtown area that are our large supporters, and we take photographs, and then we culminate with a picnic and games, and it's just become a really fun tradition. How fun. Cindy, if somebody were interested in helping at PACE, what would you what would you tell those people that might be watching this evening? Well, we have a group called Friends of PACE that are people who want to help. They want to either be involved in activities with the center. They might want to be involved financially. Um, we kind of tailor their involvement to what they would really like to do. So Friends of PACE is where I would say start. That's a great um, educational type experience also. You learn a lot about PACE. You have opportunities to be at the center participating in things that are going on with the girls. And then you also have the opportunity to do things to help the girls. Um, our Christmas um, celebration, Halloween party, all of those types of things, our friends of PACE do really help us with that. That's amazing. And so you're getting more people involved um, really all the time. We talked about that you have some some other fundraisers as well. What are some of the other things that go on? Yeah, we do. First, I have to mention, because mm -hmm. I have to say that um, this year's bag is October 19th. Oh, yeah, we so. didn't say the date. <laughs> we are, you know, you can. Mm -hmm. We're still accepting bags mm -hmm. and sponsors, but you can go ahead and mm -hmm. get your tickets. Um, so it's October 19th mm -hmm. at 1130. Okay. So make sure you go ahead and get that. Mm -hmm. um, now, let me ask you about that real quick. The bags, are they gently used bags? And like and maybe... New. And new. May, we okay, have a lot both. of new. So somebody mm -hmm. might have some fabulous Prada bag that they think, okay, yes. it's time for someone else to love this bag, right? That's and so right. They and donate we will it. accept those. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we got some, we have a vintage mm -hmm. um, Chanel and Louis already mm -hmm. given to us. Okay. So, yeah, if it's in your back of your closet, uh -huh. we will take it. You are getting the attention <laughs> of a lot of the lady viewers that are listening right now. Yeah. Um, so we've got about three minutes to talk ab about um, some of the great success stories at Pace. Uh, what, 38,000 have been served? 38,000 girls? Is mm -hmm. that about right? Mm -hmm. And over 2,500 in our local area. That's just incredible. Well, because I've been there so long, I really can't go to a doctor's office or the mall or Walmart or downtown. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, they're everywhere mm -hmm. because I've I have had the privilege of being able to be involved in that many girls' lives. And I'll, they'll, they're like 35 now, some of them 36, and they still yell, hey, Miss Laurie! Yeah. And um, that always makes me feel just 
Grateful. What if Grateful. somebody's watching and they have somebody that they know of in their life that could benefit from being at Pace? What would they do? Uh, what would they need to do? Give us a call. Yes. Mm -hmm. Just call? Mm -hmm. Yes. Just mm -hmm. give us a call and they will put through to our outreach counselor mm -hmm. who can talk to them about their needs and set up an appointment for them. We like the girls to come and, and see what's taking place. As a matter of fact, we like everyone to come and see what's taking place at Pace. That's how we like to get people involved. Um, we really like our supporters to be tied to our mission and to be able to be tied to the mission, it's really best to come into the center and just feel it and meet the girls and see in action what takes place. There's not really, I think, a good way to describe it. It's, it really, you can really feel it. Um, it's, there's a lot of really positive energy in the building. Well, so, and your board members are... Sorry, are I was just going to, going to add on to that. Um, mm -hmm. We do tours of the center. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we love for people to come in and do a tour. That's a great way to connect and to see everything happening real, real time um, during the day in the center. So also, if you're interested in a tour, they will, if you call the, the office, they will get that scheduled as well. And that's, We're proud to show off. Mm -hmm. Well, so Our you girls just, are, you know, I, I, I think one thing that we we really need to help people understand is that these girls have had some difficulties, but when they walk in the door at pace, they're being courageous and they're saying, I'm, I'm ready to change my life. And we are a voluntary program and that's one of the, the biggest factors in their success is they, they take a step and they, they learn to trust us and after time, they start to realize that they are capable and powerful and competent. Wow, that sums it up. And you ladies are very passionate about it. I know everyone appreciates yes. your service on the board. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I did, you asked about what other fundraisers, just so yeah. you know, we're in the community, everyone comes and has fun with us, like Men Who Cook, our <laughs> Ask event. Oh great. So Lots thank you stuff. for all that the community does. Absolutely, thank you so much. Thank Cindy, you. Too. Okay, both of you, all of you. Oh, there's much more ahead, including our panel of girls from the Pace Center. You are watching in studio on WSRE TV, PBS for the Gulf Coast. We'll be back right after this break. Stay with us. WSRE is celebrating 50 years and the local teachers who embrace TV as a pioneering tool before the digital revolution. While laptops, the web, and other digital resources now keep students busy, popular PBS shows enriched the classroom experience decades ago. Favorites like Nova, Reading Rainbow, and Bill Nye the Science Guy help local teachers strategically incorporate math, science, and technology into lesson plans. Innovative workshops designed by PBS and presented by WSRE provided professional development for teachers, helping them engage young minds with educational television that fostered lifelong learning. And we couldn't have done it without you, that generous support, a part of our past and future. Welcome back. This is In Studio, our topic, the Pace Center for Girls. And before we, before we move into this next segment, I'd like to play a video that was produced by WSRE about the Pace Center as part of the American Graduate Initiative. Let's take a look. American Graduate is proud to recognize a champion for education. Our mission is to provide girls and young women an opportunity for a better future through education, counseling, training, and advocacy to enable them to become independent, empowered young women and productive members of our society. I didn't want to graduate. I was going to drop out, and then I came to Pace. Frequent discipline problems, uh, family issues that caused them to not be able to attend school regularly, so they had big gaps in their learning. I didn't used to like coming to school, but once I started coming to Pace, it really brought me out to 
love school. A lot of times we might be that student's confidence until she begins to see her successes and see that she really can accomplish everything that she's come here to do. But education is more than just the academics. It's being able to function in society and be successful there. And we see that with our girls and we love it. Now I'm being a leader instead of a follower. And I have people looking up to me to be the best person I can be. Pay Center for Girls is just a beautiful place to be because amazing things happen in the lives of the girls every day, and we're here to celebrate it. Pace Center for Girls in Pensacola, a positive environment to help young women grow, achieve, and succeed. For more stories of champions, visit americangraduate.org. Joining us now, some Pace Center for Girls graduates and a former Pace girl. We have with us Miasia Brown, who is a Pace graduate, <laughs> Tia Miller, who is also a Pace graduate, and Deasia Jenkins, who is a former Pace girl. We want to welcome each of you and thank you for being with us and actually have a couple of the stars of that video here um, on the uh, set with me right now. So honored to be with you all. So um, Tia, if you would tell us a little bit about your story. How did you get to Pace? Um, actually, it was a hard route. Like, I mean, I was in foster care for a bit and just like Getting adopted is like the most wonderful like experience in my life. Going from one school that like I didn't understand and failing, it like brought me closer to Pace because Pace has provided me a great education and I ended up graduating a few months ago. So Congratulations, that's great. We're all so proud of you and Thank you. you know, your success is our success. It's our community's success. We're all getting a little teary-eyed. Lori's a little teary. <laughs> you can't help but be moved by your stories and, and what Pace has done and continues to do. Deasia, we saw you in the video. Would you tell us your story a bit? Um, my story was basically during my teenage life, you know, mm -hmm. we always get those moments <laughs> where we just think that we're all of that. <laughs> but um, my behavior, my attitude was so bad. But when I got to Pace, like, it changed my whole entire life. Like, it really did. Like, it was like, at the moment, it was like, uh, I don't like school, I don't like this, I don't like doing this, I don't want to do this. But when I got to Pace, they never gave up on me. They knew that I could do it. And I was like, if they know this, I know this. Well, what was that like then? I mean, how, when you got to Pace and you realized that, what was that like for you? It was amazing. It was, because it was like all this time I downed myself, I doubted myself, but now it's like my life is getting better. I'm more better with my coping skills. Like, I could come to someone and actually tell them what exactly is wrong instead of beating around the bush. Like, I can actually say, boom, this is what's wrong, or I need help with this. Like, if I need help with anything, I can always come to them. That's just amazing to be able to name your feelings. What about you, Miasia? What What's your story? Um, <laughs> well, it started because um, I attended Pace when I was in middle school. So I was in eighth grade and, you know, I my father wasn't in my life and, you know, my mama was barely in my life. And at the time, um, me and my other sister and my mom was staying with my older sister. so. It was kind of like hard for me to be like consistent to go to school. I really didn't like was feeling school like that. So when I um, came to Pace, um, I had this big support system, like um, the whole staff, like just everybody um, helped me um, like doctor's appointments, um, for example, like paying for like fees that need to be paid and just all of the, all of the above, mm -hmm. like, help, like, period. So, like, <laughs> me graduating from there, like, I knew I was going to graduate from there because, like, I've been there for so long, and I, like, <laughs> they just, um, I just loved it there. So, like. Sounds like a fabulous yes. um, support system. <laughs> yes. So your time there, when you got there, did you just feel that, um, that love and support? Um, it took me a while to adjust, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um... At first, I was lagging because I didn't want to be there at first. Mm -hmm. But, like, seeing how 
much work I was actually putting into it and how fast it was going, like, I was like, oh, then I can get, like, done in no time. I just got to keep continuing, keep, like, studying, just doing work. And What would you say to a girl? Because, like you said, you made a good point. I know when teenagers... Um, I've been a teenager, and when we get mad, we get mad. We don't really want anybody messing with us, right? And so if somebody comes in that doesn't want to be messed with, what would you say to those girls and the people in their lives about getting into PACE, and how does, how, is it a slow, gradual thing, or is it an immediate thing, or is it different for everybody? Well, it takes time because not all people just grab onto people when you first meet them. Mm -hmm. It takes time. You have to build up that trust, which guarantee you're going to build up that trust because they're just there to support you at whatever. Like, there's no judgment. There's no none of that. Like, you could come in there and tell the worst day of your life, and they will not, like, hesitate. They won't do that. They will help you mm -hmm. pronto. Like, mm -hmm. support so system is A1. <laughs> so, Ed, what do you think about the no judgment zone? How how has that been? Um, well, since it's all girls, <laughs> I, I really don't know the judgment. Well, it's just support. It's the lack. Yeah. It's the uh, it's the opposite of that. Then, right? Uh -huh. Again, the support. Yeah, I like the no um, judgment. Is <laughs> No, that's fine. No, and that's great. I mean, that's what we're all looking for, really, is is mm -hmm. is that support and lack of judgment. Um, have you seen other girls that, that you've gone, wow, she can do it, I can do it? Um, from me, like, there was a few girls, actually, that was um, in pace that, like, supported me. And, like, I had a few of them that I looked up to, like, because I've seen from what they were in the past and then coming to like now and seeing how much they changed and seeing how much they got done and like they're leaving and stuff and it's like I can be them and like I am. Yeah. So so I don't really want to look in the rear view too much, but I would like to ask each of you um, to just kind of say, you know, what you could have gone this way, but I but I went this way. I mean, how, how has that been for you? I'll, I'll start with you. I'm just going to say that I turned my can'ts into do's, and that's my past life. I will love that I did not go down that path, because there's no telling where I would be. There is no telling. But the path that I am taking today, I am still in school right at the moment. I am at PSC getting my GED, and once I get done with that, I'm going straight to college to be a criminal investigator. I see that. That's my life. <laughs> And all I can say is I'm glad I'm to, to pay center for girls route. Mm. Very proud. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you are, and you should each be very proud. How about you? Yes, uh, I'm very um, happy that I took the pay center for girls um, route. I actually looked up the school myself. <laughs> like <laughs> I actually told my mom like I want to go to this school, and the um, next day we went, and I started in, um, that that Monday and. I'm just happy that I look, being 13, 14, just <laughs> looking online for like a better school for myself, like just period, because. <laughs> well, now, yeah, well, now getting the word out, people mm -hmm. can, with the internet, I would imagine it's much easier to find these days. Mm -hmm. Mia's just enrolled in college. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I actually start um, school Monday. Congratulations. So. <laughs> I'm very happy to. She wants to be a nurse. That's very exciting. Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans like for the future? Or are you still trying to figure out what you want to do? Um, well, from the past, uh, if I stayed where I was, I would have been a junior this year. But luckily, I did go to Pace and got my act together, and now I'm graduated. And in January, I'm going to be in college, and I'm going to pursue my dreams. I want to become a foster care counselor to help them out. So wow, I think it's like an inspiration. Like I, I want to be an inspiration towards others. Mm -hmm. Well, I think if you've been through something, you're in a much better position because you can be empathetic, and then you can turn that. You know, we've all had trauma, and you can turn that trauma into something to help someone else. Most definitely. Yeah, kudos, big kudos, um, Lori. Do you? Ha I mean, when you see these girls, what are your thoughts I mean what how do you I can't even imagine how you feel because I'm feeling it and so um, tell us about that a little bit I 
I'm just so proud of them that, you know, like I said, they t they took a chance. They're, and for some of the girls, it's literally could be their last chance. They may not graduate from high school um, if they had not. Would you say you would have graduated me, Asia? <laughs> I don't think so. I, there was a I, couple times where I just wanted to, like, no, I can't do this. But mm -hmm. Paige just, like, helped me get back on track, like... And it happens gradually, like they've shared, you know, the building of the trust. But at Pace, we literally get to watch them blossom. They come in kind of like this. They've given up. They're, they're feeling hopeless. Um, and then little by little, when they make good decisions and they make achievements, they walk a little taller. Mm -hmm. They walk a little prouder. And then those achievements just snowball until... What our ultimate goal is, is they own their life and they own their choices. We don't want them to do anything for us. We want them to do things for them. So when they're not with us anymore, they continue to do those things for them. Very empowering. And then to, to share those things uh, with other people, don't you, do you feel it's important for community to support one another? Yes. Yes, very much so. Uh, would you um, recommend pace to other girls yes i would yes, recommend all of my life i've like <laughs> since i have been there mm -hmm. and now i'm like hey yeah you know like if you need to catch up in school this is the best place for you they won't give up on you even when like these girls here they graduated but they still keep in contact you can still always come back and ask them for anything well mm -hmm. we say once a pace girl always, always a pace, pace girl, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and i can see that there's a camaraderie mm -hmm. um do you think it it takes a certain uh, special courage to walk through the doors of Pace to begin with? I do. Um, and I think these girls kind of shared that also. They come and they're like, why is everyone so nice to me? Why is everybody concerned about my needs? Why are they treating me? And sometimes they're like, this doesn't, this doesn't feel right. I, I don't understand. And then our staff are so amazing in the ways that they work with the girls, they everybody gives them that unconditional positive regard. And then finally they say, they really are for me. This is about me. Mm -hmm. And then they just start to gobble it up. And well, very, it's authentic. Tia, yeah. all the best to you, me, Asia, the Asia. We appreciate you coming. It's courageous to walk through those doors and then to share your story and you're mm -hmm. only helping other people to move forward in their lives and, and support each other. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Vulnerable. Yes. Yeah. Well, you're watching in studio on WSRE TV, PBS for the Gulf Coast. When we come back, we'll be joined by Sheriff David Morgan, a big supporter of the Pace Center for Girls. We'll find out why right after these messages. WSRE is celebrating 50 years. Here's a look back to when it all started. Educational television, ETV, produced closed circuit classroom courses from 1963 to 1967. Local teachers auditioned for creating curriculum and teaching grade school and college instructional courses. Mrs. Onita Carpenter became director of ETV in April 1966. Broadcasting 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. into public schools and switching to open circuit for home viewers from 3 p.m. to 10 p.m. Channel 23 began open circuit broadcasts as WSRE, representing Santa Rosa and Escambia counties, on September 11, 1967. Thank you for being part of our past and our future.
Welcome back. This is In Studio. Our guests this evening all have stories and support for the Pace Center for Girls. We appreciate Sheriff David Morgan being here now. Sheriff Morgan has been in the field of law enforcement for more than 40 years, beginning in the U.S. Air Force, where he progressed from patrol officer to deputy chief of police. Since then, he has served in all aspects of law enforcement, from patrol to investigations, corrections, emergency management operations, and more. In 2008, Sheriff Morgan was initially elected to protect and serve the citizens of Escambia County, Florida, and he was re-elected to a third term in 2016. He oversees a department of over 450 personnel. Welcome, Sheriff. We want to start this segment by welcoming you and just really asking you. You've uh, heard so much about the Pace Center for Girls. You know so much about it. Why do you support it? Well, we've had a, an ongoing partnership uh, with Laurie, and uh, you know, but to say this is a wonderful organization is a, in a tremendous understatement. Uh, really, my uh, enthusiasm and fervor for this uh, organization and the work that they do uh, started several years ago. I was invited to a luncheon, which Laurie and the group puts on uh, at the Pace Center, and you get an opportunity to go over there. And I think at that time we'd only contributed a few thousand dollars, and so. During this luncheon, they actually bring in their clients, their their students, their girls, and they tell their success story as to, you know, here's, you know, what I was when I started with Pace, and here's who I am today. And I will tell you that that is probably some of the most uh, encouraging, heartwarming, heartbreaking, almost this emotional spectrum of uh, events that these girls unfold for you. And at the end of that story, it is you know, the Pace Center for Girls and their program and their staff that really saved them. And so at the end of that uh, luncheon, you know, I'm on the phone to the chief financial officer and asking him, do we have any more funds uh, in our state law enforcement trust fund that is the one discretionary fund that I have as a sheriff? Uh, because I want to write a bigger check to Pace Center for Girls. And also I wanted to make sure that on the wall of their new facility, they have up there contributors of over $10,000, I think, just the threshold. And I wanted to make sure that the Escambia County Sheriff's Office was on that wall as a partner with this program. And so, as I told Laurie when I've met with her staff several times since then, and we try every year to escrow money uh, in this fund so we've got money to give to PACE, uh, Center for Girls, when the time for the contributions come up. Uh, that, you know, I want our name and what they do inextricably linked forever. Uh, because it is so part and parcel to what we do in law enforcement. You know, sadly, uh, and a lot of people don't like to speak about this, but it's the truth. We have a tremendous number of programs out there that, that quite uh, honestly just do not work. Uh, it makes us feel very good. Uh, we contribute money. We attend the social functions, and uh, you know, we hear a success story here and there. But on the whole, when you look for their metrics as to how they measure, uh, you know, where they're making their successes, they really don't measure up. And so when I had a chance to meet Laurie and her group uh, and hear the stories that you all have heard tonight uh, about, again, success story after success story, and that uh, you know, this is a group of individuals that are committed to this program. It's not about running a checklist. It's, oh, yeah, let's, let's help some kids today. And from my perspective, from purely law enforcement, what I've learned in my time uh, in this field is while we desperately want to rehabilitate people, uh, the mountain that you climb uh, in that process is almost always unscalable. Uh, crime is being de uh, determined now by a lot of the experts in this field, the, the criminologists, that it's an addiction. Uh, it's uh, no different than smoking. It's no different than being addicted to alcohol and or drugs of some sort. And so in rehabilitating you, uh, the statistics show that even the day that you wake up and say, hey, I've, I've got a problem here, I need to change this you will fail five or six times. And if you continue, though, to struggle with this, you will eventually succeed. But the vast, vast majority fail. Why? Because they revert back to that behavior. And so we're learning <clears throat> that, unfortunately, rehabilitative programs as a whole on this end of the process do not work. Pace Center for Girls is on this end of the process, and that is diversion. It's early intervention with young people who start to exhibit those behaviors, whatever they may be, 
that we now start where they're still in that maturation learning process. And so that is the time to modify behavior. If you are already addicted, if you are already into this lifestyle, if that has been your lifestyle for years, you have to unlearn that behavior, learn new behavior, and now integrate yourself into a society that probably uh, is going to have a very difficult time embracing you even though you know that you're now on the straight and narrow. You know, Pace Center for Girls has reversed that process, and that's what we're all about. And I will tell you, these programs work. They work. Statistically, they're showing across the board now, across the United States, that that's just where you want to be, is up front, not after the thing has happened. You know, the old saying about, you know, you close the barn door after the horse is gone. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, so many rehabilitative programs, that's really what you're dealing with, is I'm now trying to fix you. Pace Center for Girls doesn't fix people, okay? They show people the right way, and they get these young women on the right path. I, you know, as I've told Laurie many times, I mean, I'm a huge fan. I hope I'm somewhat of a cheerleader for this group, to be quite honest with you, because I believe in it. It works. So why would, why would anyone in our community or any other place not want to have your name associated with Pace Center for Girls? Wow, that is quite a ringing endorsement. Uh, what does this support mean to you, Laurie? So much. Um, <laughs> We are definitely in this together. I know that um, the sheriff truly believes in, as he just said, um, let's not have these girls wind up yes. involved with him and his people. Let's spend the time now making sure they can figure out the best steps to take to be able to live a life of independence and self-sufficiency, pride, dignity and become the citizens of our community that we want them to be. It's as he stated, you know, when when you're 15 and you're four, 14, 15 and you're trying to figure out who you are and you look at yourself as a failure or a lawbreaker or someone that c comes from a place um, that is just not respected by other people. It's hard to turn that mindset around all by yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that we do for them. Our tagline is Pace Believing in Girls. Because often when they come to us, they don't believe in themselves. And that's the important thing. And yeah, I, yeah I, excuse me, but I, yeah. you know, in that presentation too that I heard the first time at the, at the lunch and at Pace, <clears throat> you know, one of the uh, kind of heartbreaking uh, statements one of the young girls made that will stay with me, I'm sure, for the rest of my life. She made a comment that, well, you know, we come here and we're learning and they love the staff and they know they're on the right, but they go back to their community and, and sometimes the, the term, you know, Pace girl uh, mm -hmm. is used as a derogatory term. And as I told folks, you need to understand something. You know, there are girls. There are communities girls. And I said, you know, there's Sheriff Morgan's girls. You know, the Florida Sheriff Youth Ranch does much the same thing with, uh, with this in that, you know, they were referred to as ranchers years and years ago. And that was a, a term of, uh, you know, derision. It was a derogatory term. And now the graduates and the people associated with the Florida Sheriff's Youth Ranch, you know, to be called a rancher, uh, you know, is kind of a badge of honor. And so we need to bring that to the Pace Center for Girls. You know, we're all Pace girls. Mm -hmm. right? you, you need to get a grip here, folks. These are our children that we have to intervene with, and that's what this program does. Boy, isn't that the truth? I'm just, um, the, the, the money that you put in on the front end is probably saving um, our citizens, our state, a tremendous I, amount. Yeah, I'm not sure you can measure that, to be yeah. quite honest with you. And, and of course, that sounds, you know, very symbolic and, you know, very whatever. Let's all sing kumbaya at this point. But I truly mean that from my business. You're diverting young people, uh, and the cost across the board, not that you know you would have ch illegitimate children, that you would be involved in crime, and you become a true burden on your community and on society. And how do you measure that? And the, and the answer is, is that if I start saving these girls, I'm not sure you can add all of that up because the number would be astronomical. You couldn't quantify no, it. No, you can't quantify right. it. Right, and you're talking about changing the, the, uh, the words that we use. It's been at mm -hmm. risk. What are we calling it now? At promise. Yes, at promise. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. You, there's a um, graduate um, that you talk about that I'm sure you're mm -hmm. um, very familiar with that was coming to pace with a baby on her head. Mm -hmm. Dantasia found herself pregnant at 15 and little by little stopped going to school until she was had been a dropout at 15. So she found out about Pace. She came and checked us out. And at first she wasn't completely committed. I think she 
wasn't really sure she could do it, but we just kept repeating to her, you can do it, you can do it. Fortunately, we received funds through Escambia County School District to provide daycare for her baby. So she got off the bus. We we're on the Pensacola State College campus, as you well know. She got off the bus at the end of the street, and she has an umbrella and her books and her baby. <laughs> and she's walking down the street to get her baby to the daycare. And that day I said, that one's going to make it. Oh, boy, if that doesn't tell you something. Well, and, and remember, uh, having had an opportunity to meet a lot of uh, the young women at, the, at that center, success sells success, obviously. And when these young women are together, it, it pays, and they see that success story. And quite uh, literally, I know one of the reasons why, you know, I grew up very poor and in poverty, but I had an uncle that, that managed to break through that. And he was always my example. And I remember he used to tell myself, you know, hey, if, if my Uncle Mark can do this, I can do this. So at the Pace Center, we've talked to the girls about this. They become instructors and role models, whether they understand that or not. And so when that success story uh, is told, and you know, she's a living symbol, if you will, of that, all these young women that are there, you know, you begin to understand that, well, you know, my problems were not as big as hers, and so therefore, if she can make it through this program and be a success, so can I. And so it literally sells off of itself, and that's another thing about PACE that's so phenomenal. That's amazing. And I would hope that um, so many people would hear you and your testimony mm -hmm. for that. And, and um, I would hope that, that the girls there would get a chance to visit with you. And ha has, have you had that? I've met quite a few uh -huh. uh, of the young ladies, absolutely. And again, I mean, I, if that doesn't warm your heart, you don't have a heart. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, thank you so much. We know you're very dedicated, and I know Lori appreciates it. Very much And so. the entire community does Honored as to be well. here. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we'd like to sincerely sincerely thank our guests for taking time out of their busy schedules to talk with us about the Pace Center for Girls. Sheriff David Morgan, Lori Rogers, Cindy Warren, and Christina Hawkins. Your conversation has been really educational, and we thank you for your service to our communities. Also, thank you to some of the Pace Girls for sharing their stories. DeAsia Jenkins, Tia Miller, and Miasia Brown, truly inspirational. If you'd like to know more about the Pace Center for Girls, they are located at 1028 Underwood Avenue in Pensacola. Their phone number is area code 850-478-7060, or you can find them on the web at www.pacecenter.org. And speaking of their web address, you can also go to refer a girl at pacecenter.org or look for the Pace Center on Facebook by going to facebook.com slash believing in girls. I'd also like to take a moment to say a special thank you to Megan Balliard. She's a special projects manager for PACE. She helped me and provided much information and assistance for this evening's broadcast. Now, on our next edition of In Studio, please join host Jeff Weeks as he takes you on a journey called... WSRE's 50th anniversary. Jeff and his guests will look back on a half a century of local public broadcasting. That's coming up Thursday, September 14th at 7 p.m. We hope you'll mark your calendars and be right here. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on In Studio. I truly hope you've enjoyed our show. I'm Sherry Hemminghouse Weeks, and I'll look forward to seeing you on a future edition of In Studio. Have a great evening. Good night.